Oh yeah, um, I'm just going to go through a run through of my K40 laser cutter. This is your, your standard eBay uh, 350 odd pound laser cutter. Now this is a true 40 watt machine, so this is not a K40 mini. Um, and I can explain how you understand which one you've got or looking to buy um, in a bit. Um, but I have been modifying this. This is a digital version of the K40 and you can tell it's digital by the fact it has the uh, positive negative buttons and the digital display. As standard it doesn't come with an analog meter um, but that is one of the upgrades you need to do for one of the digital machines. So if we have a run through we've got first of all the cutting bed, the standard size cutting bed, is 12 inch by 8 inch or 313 mil by uh, 300, no, 212 or something like that. Um, it comes with a very basic uh, bed and the first thing you need to do if you really want to, to cut something other than rubber stamps is to take it out uh, there's four screws, you remove those four screws and then there's four pillars which come up from the base of the bed. Uh, just unscrew them, take them out. Um, so that's the cutting area. Under here we have a basic power supply. Um, it's very basic with regards to what power it can handle. Um, it can just about handle the power for the laser tube and power for the K40 board. Let me just plug that back in. Um, so with this machine we've got the power supply and we've also got a Nano M2 board uh, which is written there, Nano M2, there sorry. And we have a very basic USB interface and then the cables connect to the power supply and whatnot. Now underneath here is the digital uh, power lead. We've got the on off switch and then the emergency switch. Now this emergency switch is wired so that the power comes in from the back, goes through the cable loom, up into the emergency stop into the power switch and then comes back through to the power supply. So in the event of an emergency you can just hit the emergency off. We've got a temperature display on this model. Now this temperature display is actually measuring the um, temperature at the outlet point of the laser tube. And we can go back in there in a second. Um, we've got the power as a percentage. Now that's not actually true. Um, it's very uh, nondescript what that power level is, um, which is why people say that the analog version is far better for um, controlling the power because you just have a potentiometer that you can adjust and you also have the um, analog display as standard. Now I can on this model I can adjust the power levels in uh, power 10, power 1 and 0 0.1 so what you'll, what you'll do is you'll eventually work out what power levels you require for cutting through 3mm ply, 6mm ply, acrylics, cork, rubber um, and various other materials that are not PVC based or um, or you will cover your uh, machine in loads of nastiness and you'll produce chlorine and you'll suffer. <coughs> we have the light switch and the power switch. So this power switch is not the main machine power switch. This controls power going to the Nano M2 board, so therefore 
um, you can turn the lights on, power the machine, get the water coolant running before turning the machine on itself. And then that's just your light switch. The laser switch turns the output on and off for the power supply and the laser test switch just fires a very very uh, it fires the laser beam for as long as you press the button and there'll be an LED display uh, showing when that LED is being fired now that's good for starting for testing start points framing up and uh, doing some tests so this long panel at the back has a, has a little bolt going through if we go to the back of the machine we can see the laser tube now what I was saying about this being a true K, uh, true 40 watt laser is you need to understand that the length of the laser beam length of the laser tube sorry determines the laser power so as you can see this is a 700 millimeter length 50 mil diameter the 700 millimeter length is the true k40 laser and as you can see the laser power is stated as 40 watts now i bought this machine second hand and this tube was manufactured in october 2018 uh, so it's still going okay um, haven't had any drop off of power so hopefully that's all right so this laser beam this laser tube generates a laser beam and fires it off of that mirror which is at 45 degrees to the tube it goes through that hole you can see it through that hole, bounces off of this mirror at 45 degrees into that hole, bouncing off another mirror and then shooting down through the lens which is just in there, in that silver bit there. So this machine has had some upgrades um, and I'll go through those in a moment. But basically, the, as the laser beam is firing, it's focusing on a certain point, which is 58 millimeter, uh, roughly, um, from that from that mirror to the base. And what happens is this gang, this carriage, moves up and down, left to right. I shouldn't really do that because it's everything's connected and it'll power up through inductance of the coils. So the standard laser head is just this metal plate fitted to the tube. What I've done is I've mounted a cable chain which has a very small bend radius. If I show you another version you can get has a much larger bend radius and as you can see what happens is it gets quite close to that point there and if I put that one on it doesn't actually bend enough so you need to make sure you get the right cable chain to allow full movement. Running along this cable chain I've got three wires Yep, three wires and an airline which is for my air assist. I've got one wire which is spare which as you can see is I've just tucked back into itself. The other two are carrying five volts just there and those five volts and ground power my laser diodes which create a crosshair which cross at the focal at the uh, firing focal point of the laser beam so I know I can line something up and that would be my starting point. 
the air assist, you can get a Helia air pump, um, but I'm quite lucky and I have a large air compressor. So all I've done is I've got an on off valve and that runs through the same hole that the USB comes in. Uh, there is a little air condenser filter in and that just runs through and just pokes in there and that blows air around the surface. This does not blow air across the lens so the lens can become dirty um, and fumes can reach up onto the lens. The laser diodes they're just standard £3.50 off of eBay and they are lane, uh, line lasers and as I say they create a crosshair over the point where you're firing the laser. The bed I've modified and I've taken, taken out and replaced with a £14.99 lab jack from Amazon. As you can see it's the handle is quite short. Ouch. Right. And I've got a bit of perf steel and I've put some of these cone bolts in which I've bought from eBay, um, usually for leather um, design crafts, that type of thing. And I've put that on the bed. Now this does mean that you can't actually get in to adjust easily the height of the bed. So measure it to it. or what you can do is put it this way, get the right height and then rotate it around. You can actually also put it that way round and it should still be all right. Um, I've also got some aluminium honeycomb material uh, to make uh, honeycomb beds. And this I've bought from easycomposites.co.uk. Uh, it comes squashed, so you do need to stretch it out. Um, and I'm gonna be doing that again. My other honeycomb bed isn't here at the moment. So I'll be making a new one anyway. So, what can you do on this thing? Well, here's some bits I've cut earlier. So this is a flower pot which is currently being made up. go through is what comes with the machine. So it comes with this blue bag, as you can see it's gone slightly mouldy where it's been in my other shed. Inside here we have the usual uh, manual which does go through it quite nicely, sort of. We also have an earthing, earthing cable and double-sided tape, some fittings for the water pump and some other bits and pieces and this thing. Now it comes with its own proprietary software for running it um, but the first thing you can do is just chuck that to one side, you don't need it because there have been other software developments that people have done including the quite popular K40 Whisperer. So this is one, and one that's new to the area is Mir K40T, or Meerkat. Um, so this one I'm starting to get used to. I haven't used this one before, um, but it's meant to be quite all right. Uh, but for now, we shall use K40 Whisperer.
like I say, it was connected up by USB. It's connected to the system. So let's power this thing up. If we go down here, we've got these rubber hoses that come down and just sit into a tub of water. Um, and in there is a, an aquarium pump that comes with it. And that just circulates cool water through the laser tube to keep it cool. Now this is um, deionized de water with a bit of antifreeze um, just to keep it clear of bugs and stuff. Um, we have a yeah. Uh, so the laser is powered up, come over here, turn it on, release the emergency. What we have is the aquarium pump running, the fan on the power supply, and my laser diodes. which are crossing over quite nicely. Going back to the control, we can see we can power on, power off, we can adjust. Well, as you can see, a little bit glitchy, but it's working. We have a switch for lighting and then we have the power switch for the board which will initialise the machine. Let's do that again. So I've turned it off. Turning it back on. So that's now homed. Coming back over to K40, I've got everything connected. We initialize the laser. Do that again. That just homes everything. And K40 Whisperer has three functions raster engrave, vector engrave, and vector cut. And as you can see, we have black color for raster engrave, we have blue for vector engrave and we have red for vector cut. Now when it comes to having a design, we can use Inkscape to create a design. Now if I open um, this design as you can see we have black text now that will go into K40 Whisperer and it will vet raster engrave so if you're doing any engraving of text or anything um, that is one of the options and the way this works is it scans line by line uh, cutting where it's black but it will do it at a speed of 100 millimeters per second. The power setting is completely controlled by the laser cutter. It is not controlled by software. So if you did a raster engrave at 20, it would go uh, it will go much slower and that will obviously create a deeper cut without adjusting your power settings but you'll more than likely just cut through the whole lot and end up with uh, just a hole. The vector engrave, if I go into this design and adjust this to blue 
so that we have a solid blue design. And then I load up That didn't do it. Bear with me one second. We have blue, uh, probably that needs to be right, so. This design has now no fill, but has a blue outline. So if I save as SVG blue, go into K40, open design, cut here blue, we should have the blue. small bit. So what this will do is it will actually scan around a second. So it will cut this but instead of cutting along the edge it will actually scan across Nope, sorry, it will run around the text like that. Now, if this was red, Two five five zero zero. I'll save as red. Go back into K40 Whisperer, open the red design, we have this and what will this will do is this will run around and cut along here. So the reason why vector and grave vector cut carry the same path but one is red and one is blue it means that you can have multiple colors on your designs you can engrave outlines and cut around an object if I open up
somewhere. If I open up, so this design, as you can see, we have, I'm cutting I open up this design now this has two colors we have the red which is actually my engraving and blue which is actually my cut line so I've got these the wrong way around but I can get around that by adjusting the speeds I set those. Now I'm back down to the laser cutter. What I'm going to do is get a bit of material. That shall do. Now this is what we are going to cut. This is my height gauge. And what we can do is we can use it to work out the focal point just by adjusting Let's use a weight just to hold it on using this scrap piece temporarily. I'm doing is I'm using the laser cut bit just to mark up the right focal point. There we go. And as you can see, we have a very fine crossing point, so I can adjust that to suit where I'm going to cut. Now the air, air nozzle is down here and it's pointing down towards that crossover point. I can turn on the laser power. I'm going to adjust my power to about 15. And then what I can do is I can just fire that to see what the meter reading is. That's 6 milliamps. That would do. Now if I'm going to cut something, I need some extraction. So at the back here, we have an extraction 3D printed adapter going to some 100 mil hose, which is going off to my super duper inline fan. And the outlet of that just gets chucked out the window, chucked out the door. When you get the stock K40 laser, this piece at the back, this piece here, sits out quite a long way. So it means that you can't actually cut the full area. So what you do is you just cut that off to take it back a bit. So let's power up the fan. now sucking and it's drawing the air through to the back. So I can turn on the laser and now when I fire all that smoke is being drawn away. Going back up to our design we can initialize the laser cutter we know we've got control of it. Now I can move it across. I'll do that again. And I can also move it down. 
Now the reason why it wasn't moving down so much is because I have rotary settings on. So this is your starting point. You can move it to that side, you can move it to the bottom and the other side. So this allows us to make sure that our piece is going to fit on the material. Once it has, what we can do is we can do the engraving, in this case on the vector cut profile, by clicking that button. I will turn on the air assist. And I will hit the vector cut button. Thank <laughs> you.